and today we're going to be looking at stem and leaf plots. So what is a stem and leaf plot? Well I've drawn one over there. So what this is, is it's a visual representation of what the data actually is and what it's actually grouped as. So here in between the lines here is called the stem. So this is the stem. I'm going to write in green stem underneath it. Stem. And then the rest of it I'll write in black is the leaf. And that's why, how it gets its name. So we have a stem and we have leaves coming off the side of the stem. So this is this particular stem and leaf plot is great for um, looking at how the data is skewed and it's also great for finding um, uh, the modal class of a particular data set. So if we look at this particular data set we can see that there's more points in this two here. But what does that actually mean? So the way we read this is by looking at the stem. That's the tens column, right? And then we have a zero here and that means that our data set has a 10 in it and then the next data set is a 1 which is the, in the tens column and then a 2 in the units column which means we have a 12 and this keeps going so this we have a 17 and we have why do we have a 5 there? 5 should not be there this has to be in order we're going to change that Eight, so it makes more sense, All right? Eighteen. Another thing to notice is that this has to be in order, so you can't just have a five there like I did beforehand. So next we have the twos column, and we have twenty-two twice, then we have a twenty-seven, a twenty-eight, and then a twenty-nine. Then we have to the three tens column and we have a 34 we have a four tens and no units we have 40 41 and 59 so you can see that if this was all in one line here and it was all mixed up there's no way to actually get a feel for where and how this stem and leaf plot, how this uh, data set is actually formed. So it's, that's a, another thing that you have to do in a stem and leaf plot is actually write a key. So way you do this is you put something in the tens column you draw a line and then you put something in the units column it doesn't have to be in this data set but it has to relate to it and then you can say that's equal to 25 and then whatever it is dogs for example or centimeters or depending on what the data actually represents depends on what this key will be. This is where you put your units, this is where you define what this actual stem does. Like for example this could have been in this key 205 because we're dealing with hundreds for example or we could it could be the other way around, our units is actually 250 and so there's another possibility right but the way that this works 
is that as long as you have a key this should all mean something. Another thing that you often see is the data being split up to show more of a spread of the data. So I rewrite my key to two and let's just say that's equal to twenty two for argument's sake. You see that in the tens column we have things appearing twice now. So what that does is that it traps things it traps things less than five but and shifts them as it what it does is that it gives all the numbers below five its own separate column and everything above five its own separate column. So you can see here this can go all the way up to nine, right? And this can still be read out as 10, 12, 14. This is still 15, 16, and 19 but it's expressed differently. So this is, can be used if you're um, dealing with things that are really high in the ones column, but you've got nothing else in the other columns. So for example, you have a whole heap of stuff in the ones column, four, five, you have lots of fives right nines right so on a really huge list just imagine that key is still there right we can now split them to see more of a spread so we have a five we have a five we have a nine we can we now know that we have more things less than 15 than greater than 15. We can make better assumptions using these, using it split like this. Uh, another good reason why you would use stem and leaf plots is to talk about how the data is actually uh, displayed. So here we can say uh, I'm going to change this data a little bit. But here we can look at this data and we can say a couple of things about this data so imagine that this was some sort of graph on the side here so our graph looks something like that right we can say that this graph is negatively skewed right if you picture this as a Cartesian plane, there's negative numbers here and positive numbers here, you can see that there's, an, it's, all of the data is mostly clumped towards the negative, so we say that's negatively skewed. We can also see things like this, where there is uh, an even spread. We can also see things like a bell curve like that and we can say that it's symmetrical because it looks the same if we split it down the middle. We could also say that it's positively skewed. As you can see here it's leaning more towards the opposite direction so it's more of a positive skew. These are all things that you can use to describe a set of data. 
So, if uh, a question in an exam asks you how would you describe this stem and leaf plot, you can say it's negatively skewed, it's symmetrical, it's blah blah blah. You can also say that um, things about its center, measures the center, so things like the mean, the median, the mode, range. All these things are great for uh, explaining and um, showing understanding of stem and leaf plots if you need to describe them for whatever reason. So that's all I have time for today for stem and leaf plots. So we briefly talked about how to describe stem and leaf plots and we talked about how to make stem and leaf plots and how to use stem and leaf plots. So if you have any questions feel free to leave a question in the comment section below or contact me on social media and I will see you in the next video.